Hi, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jer. We are going to be talking about the very end of Melinda Berga's Drag Race. This is episode eight, A Star is Born. And a star leaves television for probably the first time because I'm sure that Melinda's gonna be back. Tomorrow is the finale. I've been very behind on these videos, but thank you for everyone who has come in and watched all of these. I really appreciate you. So I'm still really bummed that Kiki is gone. I am having a hard time processing the fact that she's not in the competition anymore. I really pinned Kiki Ko as being someone who was gonna make it all the way to the end. I thought she had that thing that I really like to see in a Drag Race contestant, especially upon the promo. It just, she had such an air of someone who knew exactly who they were. Same with Kitten Caboodle, same with Denim, same with Aurora. These people that I really thought were gonna make it all the way to the end, two of them did. So I don't count this as a complete bust. However, I like this whole cast. I think I pinned Venus as an early out and that was a mistake on my part and I really shouldn't have ever discounted Venus and what they were able to do. This is a really strong top five. I think we've got a nice mix of drag styles. We've got Melinda, who's kind of doing this bar queen type drag, old maiden type of shoes. She's really giving television in a way that we haven't seen in a very long time. We've got Denim, who's giving these really high concept looks. Aurora, who is bringing so much culture to Drag Race and infusing so much of what makes her unique as a person into this competition. Then we've got Venus, who is giving this androgynous, hyper femme, really incredible, thinking outside of the box style of drag. And then we've got Nira, who is just a firecracker. So much energy, so much passion, so much of what's happening right now in the nightclub scene. And it's been so great to see. I've enjoyed every episode, and for the first time in a really long time, I'm sad that a season is ending. I felt this way about season 12. That was like the last big time that I felt this way, where I just loved everybody that was in the cast and it felt bad that it was about to end. And that's how I feel right now. It feels bad that it's over. And I want this to be the whole cast forever. I just wanna see them all the time doing what they do best. So moving into the actual challenge, this is the makeover week. And this is how a makeover week should be done. This was such an emotional roller coaster from the start of the episode all the way to the end. We got to meet all of the different family members. So we got to meet Venus's mom who was stunning. I loved hearing her story and how she supported Venus. We got to meet Aurora's best friend and this woman was so gorgeous. She's also a model and the way that she carried herself through the main stage presentation absolutely was indicative of the fact that she is a model. I cried during Aurora reading the letter from her parents. This cast feels so close and familiar. They've done a really great job this season of showcasing them as people and allowing their real stories to come out. And I think this cast is not self-producing at all and trying to create a character for us as the audience to see. We just get to see their raw, vulnerable selves. And so seeing Aurora, who has really made her culture so important as a part of her drag, and understanding that a part of that culture isn't totally there with queerness yet, especially with drag. Hearing her parents note saying that they accepted her, it touched me in a way that I wasn't expecting to feel. It was a whirlwind of emotions. We got to meet Denim's mom, who was absolutely stunning, and hearing her talk about how she would have fought armies to protect Denim and make sure that Denim got where they needed to go was so touching. I think every queer person that has had a tough time with family understands that desire of just wanting your parents to advocate and fight for you. And knowing that Denim's mom was there every step of the way, always fighting, always pushing, always rallying to make sure that Denim got the care that they needed. That was something so special to hear. And then meeting Melinda's partner was the chaos that I only expected of him walking in the room and her going to hug him and immediately asking who's watching the dog. She's so real for that because that's what I would do if Jake walked into a workroom like that. I would immediately be so happy to see him, but then immediately worry who's watching our children because we have four cats and I would be very worried about them. And finding out that they met in a bathhouse was the chaos that only Melinda Verga could present to Drag Race. 
So the mini challenge is that their partner has to put them in drag. They're not allowed to receive any help and then they have to do a photo shoot and sort of improv along the way. And I think that Melinda did the best. Every single mini challenge, Melinda's excelled and done wonderful because she understands that she's being recorded. She understands that she's got to take everything to the next level, to almost a farcical place. Being really hammy and silly and screaming, projecting as much as she did, really amplifying everything up to 11 was exactly what all of them should have done. And I mean, she kind of looked decent, as good as Melinda can look, painted by somebody else. And then we move into the main challenge, which was a red carpet couture look. What I appreciated about this were two things. One, they actually had to make the outfit themselves for their partner. This kind of prevents that situation that happens so often in current drag race, where someone will just bring duplicates of something, they'll have two outfits, one that's got black and white elements, another one that's got white and black elements. And then they'll sort of just tailor it as they need to once they get to the workroom, figure out how it'll work on the other person. This requires them to look at their wardrobe, find what works, and then create something for their partner. They're trying to do an elevated look. It doesn't have to be a super close family resemblance, but it does have to look like they're going to the same red carpet. So if you happen to be with your sibling or your parent or your twin. It's just gotta be red carpet ready. This was a fun, smart way of addressing this challenge. Because again, I think it's gotten a little stale over the years. Everyone sort of knows, okay, well, I'm gonna do a twin look, so I'm gonna bring a duplicate of this, or I'm gonna bring an asymmetrical version of this. And these are not bad concepts, but it doesn't quite bring that level of excitement, that challenge that we really need from Drag Race. So let's get into the look since this was the most important part and we already have discussed a little bit of the conversations that happened, but this was such a beautiful episode. If you have not seen it, you need to go watch it because my God, this made me more emotional than a lot of other seasons of Drag Race I think ever have or could. But before we do that, our weekly Brooklyn Heights appreciation moment again, she is always coming for Melinda's gig. I'm telling you, Brooke has got her designer on retainer, watching what Melinda's doing and saying, make it better. I mean, all she was missing was a hat. So here we go. First look is Venus and Uranus. I really love that Venus sort of took the I'm the red carpet approach to it by wearing red. Not a huge fan of this platinum blonde on her, but her mom looks so good. She literally looks like a movie star. I think my only real problem with it is these kind of chunky gemstones that are on the belt. I think they feel a little bit too sparse, but God, she looks like a 40s actress. If this is part glamour red carpet makeover, part look like you're kind of resembling each other, Venus was able to infuse her drag into her mom. And I think that they both look great. This was very solidly like number two or three for me. I wasn't really sure where I felt on the lineup, but this was solidly in two or three. <laughs> we have Nira and Buffy enough. Um, <laughs> so I need to address this elephant in the room, Nira's fiance, who I specifically did not talk about previously because I want to talk about how big and buff and beautiful this man is, and how the whole internet is losing their minds over Buffy enough. Um, this man is gorgeous for no reason. For no reason. And their story was so nice. Hearing someone who looks like that, you would sort of assume that they would gravitate towards other muscle gays. And the fact that breaking this archetype that you see so prevalently in, in gay culture in particular, where gay men tend to flock to people that look just like them. Now this big buff dude went for someone and was attracted to someone who didn't look just like them. That really made me happy. It made me feel like there's hope for our culture that we're not just so self-absorbed and self-obsessed and that people are moving in a different direction. Being able to find happiness with someone they genuinely do care about without being caught up in physical attributes, like also being buff. But the elephant in the room. <laughs> so do you remember when Manila made over that big buff dude in season three? 
This makeover facially looks just like him. Even down to the mannerisms of walking down the runway and the way that he was sort of like, <laughs> the whole time, it was so much that I kept getting my wires crossed. That's what it reminded me of. So we got like a toga party, which I don't really understand why that was the thought process with making an outfit. I don't think that Nira really knows what she's doing with a sewing machine. So I don't know if this was like first concept or the first concept of I can make this so it'll be fine type situation. This was absolutely the worst look of the night for me, which is a bummer because I love the way that Nira looks. This red is so stunning. I love the hair. I really love the makeup on Buffy. The outfit is just so simple and doesn't really make sense for red carpet. This to me, bringing it back to Manila, feels like her makeover in All Stars 4, where it's just so under-realized. It might as well have not been there. And then we have Mother Melinda and Conchita Verga. <laughs> Looking like CC superstar out here. <sighs> okay, y'all know we stand Mother Melinda and we can stand while also being logical in our assessment and self aware of our observance of this piece of drag. There is a lot going on here that is not quite the best. So the storyline is that she's like the the young <sighs> the young actress who's getting her role stolen by somebody else and she's upset and they're going to the thing together and it doesn't make sense story-wise. The outfit is not that great. The makeup is rough. The makeup is rough, but that's fine. The boob placement is rough, but that's fine. The cut of the dress is actually quite nice. I think the fabric is wrong. This almost looks like bedding to me and I don't love that. I think she really should have picked a sparkly fabric something with some visual interest, because this just wasn't it. And then the white hair, I think if it was like, if the story is supposed to be, I'm a young actress, and now this older actress is coming to steal my gig, maybe they should have gone like a more Meryl Streep type vibe, because maybe if she had some type of like sleeker hair that wasn't so big, and then maybe if the outfit was a little more conservative, it might have read story-wise like, or flipped it and had Melinda be the older one and then the partner be the younger one and she's now coming up and taking the roles. I don't really know how you could have done this. I I'm trying to make excuses for Melinda and it's not working. This was rotten. But at least construction wise, this is very well put together. And there's a lot of visual interest on this. It's a really nice look for not Drag Race. So next up is the Denim and Velvet, which I love this name play. It was so smart. I loved that when Velvet came out, the judges were yelling, is that Denim or her mom? And we legitimately couldn't tell. This resemblance was so striking. The challenge was not specifically to make someone identical to you, but Denim took that extra step and made their mom look just like them. And it was so good. The construction of this dress with the spray paint on it and the ombre, all the visual effects were perfect. This is exactly how you should do a makeover challenge. You infuse your drag into your partner. You create a stunning look and a stunning presentation. You both have fun and you just kill it. And that's what they did. This was number one. I, I was worried that maybe Denim might have gone home this week. And I'm so glad that they turned it out so fiercely because if they didn't, this was game over for them. And every detail about this is immaculate. Then we have Aurora and Supernova Matrix. From the front, it's not bad. This is where all the sparkly fabric went that Melinda really should have used. I love this eggplant color on Supernova. I think she looks so glamorous and you can tell by the way that she walks and carries herself that she does modeling because she really knows how to sort of smile outwards and to camera she knows how to be eye-catching. There are some design issues and if I'm being completely honest I'm not surprised because the first design challenge 
Aurora wasn't super strong either. But this hair is great. I thought the makeup was fun. This is not a read. Aurora doesn't really wear that much makeup. She's not really a cosmeceuticals type girl. So the fact that they read Supernova for not being really glam was odd to me because I don't necessarily equate Aurora with crazy makeup. In my opinion, I thought it was solidly probably number three. And those were all the looks. I thought that denim killed it. And I'm really glad that denim did not go home because we would have never gotten this story. Am I still really bothered and bummed that Kiki is gone? Yes. If there was gonna be a week to double save, I kind of wish it was last week. And I know they couldn't do that, but I kind of wish that it was last week. But I don't know who I would swap out of this group. I like all of them. So going into tomorrow, the finale, I don't know who I want to win. In the lip sync, we lost Mother Melinda. They did I Didn't Come Here to Dance by Carly Rae Jepsen, and I was so excited. Oh, Canada's Drag Race always pulls out the Carly lip syncs and does them well. Melinda and Nira slayed the house down. It was so great to watch. I enjoyed every second of that lip sync. And I'm gonna be honest, during the lip sync Smackdown, I was wondering why there wasn't a Carly song. And it makes sense that it got saved for a later lip sync. So Mother Melinda's gone, but Nira remains. And Nira is one of my favorites. This is a well-rounded top four. We don't have the TV personality and the chaos of Melinda anymore in the running, but we've got so much sparkle from everyone else. Really interesting point of view with drag, really specific cultural references, really specific fashion references, and I don't know who I want to win. Aurora was one of my pre-season top four picks, as well as Denim. So I'm perfectly content with either one of them winning, but I have grown to absolutely love Venus. And Nira has just slowly overtaken my heart as one of my favorite competitors in this franchise. And I don't know what I want. I don't know who I want. I don't know who, I don't, I don't know anybody that's having an easy time figuring out who they want to win this season. But it's going to be so interesting to see what happens tomorrow. I'm curious who you're rooting for. Let me know in the comments below and I will see you very soon for the finale. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to click that like button. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Goodbye.